time to trade the London Open on September 26th. That's a Thursday. Today and tomorrow to go. So we've got today and tomorrow to wrap up this week. It's been a good one. The agenda for this session is lessened. We're going to be going over risk management a little bit. Uh, next up is going to be uh, our watch list and active trades. And then we're going to go over some important stuff for the day. Now, once we're done with all of this, we'll pop into the charts and go over the watch list and live trades just to make sure that everyone's on the same track. So let's get going. It's going to be a fun session. Now, my name is Dennis. Pipsmatter.com is what I started in 2016. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, well, it was fun. It's going to get absolutely amazing from here on end. We're going into the last quarter of the year. So we really have to up our game here and make sure we reach those six figures in these three months. And then we'll move on to monthly six-figure returns. Now, um, don't start a war. You can't ever, ever, ever win. That is the saying for today. Now, that's about risk management. Now, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about you don't want to start fighting with the trades. Listen, in the Forex game, you're trading against the biggest central banks in the world, some of the biggest hedge funds. It's very liquid. Actually, the most liquid market in the world, and everyone's a part of it. From technology companies to pharmaceutical companies, everyone depends on the rates and exchanges. And sometimes, well, they move drastically. And they can be manipulated on a day-to-day -day basis, not on the, on the long run, but on a day-to-day -day basis. So they are relatively dangerous to trade, but lots of money can be made if you have structure, and especially if you follow a structured risk management plan. And that's what we do. We use a structured entry system for trades and structured compounding system for trades. That's what we do, and that's what helps us. So in the course that I'm making, that's exactly what you're going to be going over. Every member in the community receives the um, structure position sizing Excel formula that helps us be structured and know what we're shooting for week in, week out, so we can reach our goals. Now, when I say don't start a war, you can never win. Uh, the most important thing here that we're talking about is, um, is a very basic principle, and that's, that's what? That's don't fight the markets. You don't want to fight against the big central bank. Uh, you don't want to fight against your own emotions. So when you start trading, for example, I started selling USDCHF yesterday. As soon as it started breaking that level and I saw there was momentum in it, I got out before my stop loss was hit. And that's basically me not fighting a war I can't win. Uh, on the other side, I saw GBP USD providing me great opportunities. So I used the equity from USDCHF, reversed it, and added it into, into um, GBP USD. And that's going really great. So that's the lesson for today. Do not fight the market. Don't. You're basically going to be starting a, a big, you're going to create yourself a big problem. You're going to create yourself a problem that, um, well, it's, it's, not gonna, it's, not, it's just not going to work out for you. You're going to end up going bust. It happened to me too. I went on a five-month consistent winning win after week, week after week, until I came to that one trade and I, and I decided to start that war. But you can't win that war. You can't if you don't, you could if you have a couple of billion dollars in your trading account, you could move the market in your favor. Otherwise, you can't. So don't fight somebody you can't win. Moving on, watch list and trades taken. Now, on the watch list so far, I have Euro USD, AUD USD, and the DAX. Executed trades are GBP USD sell, Euro GBP buy, Euro CHF buy, and Boeing sell. So we're going to go over all of those. Now, the watch list is Euro USD. AUD, USD, and DE30. That's the watch list. The trades are GBP, USD, uh, Euro, GBP, Euro, CHF, and Boeing. So we're going to go over that in a minute, and I'm going to explain to you exactly what we're doing with these trades. Important for today. Now, today is governed by central bank speeches and U.S. data. On the central bank speaker side, we've got Draghi speaking for the ECB. For the Fed, we have quite a few, as you can see. Kaplan, Baller, Clarida, Daly, Kashkari, and Barkin. And we also got Bank of England, Carney. Uh, in terms of data, the main things that are coming out of the majors is um, U.S. quarterly GDP, U.S. jobless claims, and pending home sales. So that's it. Let's go into the charts. It's time. 
Let's move on to the charts. So GBP USD, check this out. So we have this beautiful contraction. There's the 50% of it. Really important that you pay attention to how the market's moving so you know what you're going to do. Now, within this contraction, we did make money on buy, selling first up here based on this key level of this support. Um, and this one here, a more important one. Um, I'll remove this one. It's not that important. So we sold here after the scandal. Then we had this contraction. We bought. TP was reached very quickly. Then we chilled. Price action came, retested this upper level. That was our, our entry signal. So free trades within the contraction. And then we went down, reached this level. I got out. We came up. I went back in again. And now I'm riding it and I compounded based on this possible retest. So I've got two trades running. I'm shooting for 50% here. I think it should be reached today. That's for GBP USD. Euro GBP, another contraction, breakout and retest of the double bottom here. Um, it looked good. There is a contraction. 50% is a little far, but we are in profit. Now, we did have a possible flag pattern here on the one hour as well with this push up and then with re re um, retracement to the downside. We are moving up, but for us to make sure that this trade works out, unlike AUD CAD, which couldn't break the 30%. That's very important. If 30% gets broken, then there, it's like a 90%, 99% even percent chance in some cases that 50% is going to be reached. So if we get to close above 30%, we are set. Um, it's moving good so far. Euro CHF on the other side, another contraction. I showed this to you guys yesterday. Now, check this out. We have a free lower low pattern right within the contraction, very quickly forming. There it is. And that was the second entry. I did move the stop loss a little bit. And then that candle here gave me the confirmation of the third lower low, and that's in. Now, 50% lines up exactly with this key trading level of 1.09260. Check this out. Top to bottom, there it is. It's like literally almost there. So that's what we're targeting. We need to break the EMA. We need to confirm break above 23.6, 23.6 mainly because of this here. Um, and then 30% because you can see it be a, a resistance. Um, let me show you here, here. Here, see, it's an, it's an interesting level. And then here and here and here and then here and then support here. So you see that. Uh, so we need to break this to confirm the upside move. This is a, not a very drastic move. See, it's about 50 something pips, so it's okay. And that should work out, uh, should work, out, should work well, out well. So that's it for that. I'm gonna go over Boeing really quickly. It's been messing around. It's been messing around with me a little bit. Check this out, beautiful. Oh. That's not it. Yeah, that's it actually. I, I just didn't load. So check this out. It came right back to make a retest of the, of the contraction. Now I did move my stop loss higher. I told you guys this yesterday. Still targeting the same level, 61. We did make a retest and there's our, our final confirmation for selling. And I'm gonna probably go short on this again. It's this indecision candle right there. High, low, and then a body in the middle and then this retest. It's just gorgeous, it looks perfect. So that should really be something good. Uh, Boeing should start dropping down, and if it doesn't, then I'm gonna look for reasons to get out, but I'm gonna show you something else. We've got this high, the next high, and that's the resistance. I'll make it black to explain. There it is, a really nice, beautiful resistance right there. So we had the reversal candle here. We have this possible reversal candle with the retest of the contraction. So this should start moving south, Again, um, you can see that the S0 is right there with this level, so 61 and 50 is here. 50 adds up with this range over here, and then 61 winds up with the bottom of that range. So I'm gonna be shooting for 61. Boeing has had a lot of problems uh, lately. I'm sure you guys seen it in the news. So it should be good, and as I explained in yesterday's session, when it goes down, it goes down quick. It goes really quickly down. See that? When it starts moving south, it really goes south. It just doesn't wait. Rapid movement to the downside. So I'm hoping to see something similar again here, and I really think it will happen. So yeah, putting good money on this. That's the four trades running right now. Like I said, GBP USD sell, Euro GBP sell, no, Euro GBP buy and Euro CAD buy. 
uh, and then Boeing sell. Now let's go over the two act, uh, the two free trades in the watch list, Euro USD. I said yesterday it should be bearish. It's coming back down to this level, but when it does come to this level, that's when we're really going to bring our attention to this one. Uh, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's it's just a couple of pips away. RSI is coming down to this under the twenty, almost under the twenty level, indicating some bearishness. Um, I would love to see the daily chart here and just see if there is a possible contraction forming. No, there isn't. But for the day, it should go down. Um, I'm not worried about Euro GVP though, because the GVP should be weaker. Lots of problems over there. We have this possible sideways support as well, lining up with the, with the level here. So in the next, what, couple of candles, which should reach down here. And then it's up time. That will make it the triple bottom. Keep in mind, we want to get the close here as well, right there, just to make sure that this is another support. So if we see it pushing up, we might re-enter. Uh, on the top side, we have, oops, on the top side, we have this resistance level there, like this, something like that. Um, so yeah, it looks like a basic little contraction. We'll see how it works out. I'll keep my attention on this. And when there is buying or selling opportunities, everybody in the community will know. Um, next up is AUD USD. AUD USD coming to this key level right there. It's looking good. I'm not going to go over system education much just so you guys know, but if you want to see that, if you don't know about it, go on YouTube, go to my channel, Google my, uh, search my name, Dennis Popivoda, and uh, you'll find exactly how this works. I've explained it in dozens upon dozens of sessions. So this could be a support level. It has acted as a basic support here, not much strong movement from this level. You see that here and here, small pips. So if we see it pushing up, uh, I'd rather wait for the bottom levels here and wait for some kind of pattern to form. There is no pattern, but it is in my watch list. Finally, DE30, this one made me a lot of money this week. Very happy about it. A um, couple of trades taken here. So that worked out great. Now, we did bounce from this level. I'll show you where it lines up. I found it yesterday. No, it's not there. Oh, it's. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Uh, you could hear me in the session yesterday as well, calling one of the clients who trades the DAX a lot and telling him to get out. Um, so we got out of it and it was good. Now we have the sideways resistance, but we have a possible little head and shoulders right there. So if this breaks and this breaks, then I'm going to go long to the next red level. Uh, in the meantime, I'll map out some other levels where price found resistance, such as here. Come on, man. Um, such as here, it comes close to the red level, so I'll keep it at the close, because that could be a level where we might get out if we go long. Um, then we have this level here, which basically lines up with the black level. You see that with this level here. So I'm not gonna touch that. Like I said, my trading plan here is if I see a push up and a close above this and the EMA, of course, then I'm gonna look for reasons to go long. There is a head and shoulders possibility of it, um, and then we'll take it from there. All in all, um, I know I, I speed streamed through this. These are the trades we're running. They're looking good. Um, they are pretty much all in profit right now, except for Boeing. Um, I've got 29 pips on GBP USD. Uh, I've got 15. Uh, this is the compounded ones. 15.7 on Euro GBP and Euro CHF, uh, about 15. So yeah, that's looking good. Uh, GBP USD is tumbling nicely now. So the dollar is strong. Take profit should be reached relatively quickly here. It's not too far. I think it can even happen today. Uh, 60 pips. Yeah, daily movement, easy. Euro GBP pushing now really nicely. We need to break this, break 23% as well, 23.6. Then we, next one level <clears throat> is 30. Once we get out of that, then we see where we go. Boeing opens up at 1.30 p.m. GMT. So hopefully we get something out of that. Hopefully we can do some, some trades on that. Uh, maybe compound it a little bit more because my system really works well with stocks. Now, keep in mind, like I explained when I was going over the lesson, um, trading stocks and Forex are two very different things. In the foreign exchange market, you have a lot of players. That's why it's so liquid because companies, governments, uh, and everyone else depends on the exchange rate, even down to the tourists. So 
even though the tourists have no say in this, the central banks and big massive corporations like Apple, um, you know, Amazon and, and so forth, they do benefit from different exchange rates, right? So if they have products that they want to sell in, let's say, the UK and the British pound is too strong versus the, versus the, the, the US dollar, they're actually losing money, right? So it's in their interest for the pound to be, let's say, weaker so they can make more money. Same goes for the euro dollar, same goes for the Chinese stuff, for Australian stuff, for everything. So there's a lot of players. So it's very liquid and very dangerous. That's why you see it move so much. On the other side, when you're looking at stocks, they are much more predictable in a sense, uh, at least with my system. You know, like I find these key levels and when I see they can't be breached or reached, I, uh, I know what I need to do. And I made really good money. Let me show you on which stock actually. Uh, American Airlines. There it is. Look at this. It was a gorgeous, simple, and easy trade. Look at that. TP was reached 50%. Boom, straight away down. Just great. It took about 28 days to happen, but still, it's really worth the wait because look at the, the percentage margin on this. Even if you went long here, 18% up. So imagine having 1,000 shares on that. Um, so you can see that 50%, for example, lines up with this level here. You see that right there? Price is going down, reverses, leaves this Dogecoin channel straight line, but it has to reach that level. Um, so yeah, that, that really worked out well. Then we have this here. Oops. Remember, I trade five markets, Forex, stocks, commodities, indices, and crypto. And this works on everything. So you can see this level here being a nice resistance right there. Price tried to break it, couldn't, went down, made the new minor contraction. Of price, strong volume, gap up, accumulation at EMA, push, came right there, gap up. That's it. That's when you compound. You start compounding. Start adding on to your buy. Uh, now again, look at this. Price came back down, retested this level. So there's the that's the high and there's the close of the candle, right? See that? There is the close. See? Perfect. Push up. Um, now, I'm not going to map this level in because clearly it's a support from there. Then we have this major level here, this being a nice little resistance slash support. And then this level up here, I'll map this one in because it's grabbing this level better. It's not rocket science. It's not too hard to do. Uh, you map up these levels. You know what you're doing. Check this out. So we had a strong buying happen here. And then price came here slowly broke out of it, use it as a resistance, came down, use it as a support here, support, 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 broke out, retest on the gap up here, and then boom, tumbling down. And when a level gets breached with force, that's when we know we need to continue selling. Um, so yeah, do you guys have any active trades? I see quite a few people in today's session. So if you have any couple, if you have any trades running, shoot them in the chat box so I can review them and we can see if we can help each other out somehow. In the meantime, I'm gonna answer some messages. Okay, got a question here. Dave, are you still in uh, GBP USD? Okay, you, you close it with a good profit because it's, it's coming right back down here. I mean, there's nothing really to stop it, to be honest with you. You have this resistance here slash support now could be because price came with force and then reverse direction. So that means this could be an important level. Okay, that's good. Um, let's, let's see what else there is. So let's check Euro CHF. I think you're a little late for most of the trades, but this one could be good in 37 minutes. So keep in mind, every four hour candle based on the plus free GMT time. So 4 a.m. for me, which is 1 a.m. GMT is my first four hour candle. Now I do this because the Forex markets open based on plus free GMT on Sunday night, midnight. That's when the Forex markets open. That's why I focus on this candle. Now, in 36 minutes, as you see here, there is a new candle coming out, the four-hour one. If we manage to stay above this, 
let's go over the probabilities because probabilities are very important with our system. What are the probabilities here? Push up, close here, push up, and retest these levels here, right? So we have this level here. I want to just map it out because strong buying took place. Uh, it was the news, but it still doesn't matter. Um, you can see it being a support here and then breakout. So we're using this as a resistance now. If we manage probability one, if we manage to break this, TP should be easily reached because you can see price fluctuate in this levels easily. Moves a lot right between 108.750 and this level here, 109.260. So if it closes above, I'd say it's a very easy possibility <clears throat> of it, probability of it going to the 50%. On the other side, what could happen? We could push down here, make a retest, so make a head and shoulders, let's say, and then go upwards. That's probability number two. This is for buying. For selling, it's push out, close below this level, and that means we have another scenario of uh, AUD CAD. Let me show you what happened with AUD CAD. Real shame, real shame, because, um, I mean, I, I spotted it, and you can watch that session. It's on YouTube, and I clearly said there, listen, we're, we're not closing above. There it is, look. We're not closing above the 30%. We just couldn't. There it is. Just can't close above the 30%. One, two, three, four times price action. The bulls tried. They failed. That's when we need to cut our basic position. Even if it goes up, it's better to be saved than sorry because there's always, always going to be another trade. Um, so, yeah, you can see this. Does, it just didn't work out. And now we're back into this range of point. 89045 and 0.89810. So that's where we're chilling now. That's where we should stay at. I'll continue to monitor everything. I do have a few trades open, but I got a really nice profit of a gross profit of 2.5K and a net profit of 2.423. Um, all in all, a really good, really good return so far. Um, I mean, for a, for a Thursday morning, that's great. Most people work the whole month in Cyprus to make two and a half grand. Um, now 2.6. Um, so yeah, uh, generally I, I checked the Forex markets. This is all I could find. I, today I don't have any babysitting to do. I've got nothing specific to do. Um, so I'm just going to be focusing on the community, on the videos, running the show, and making some pips for me and for you and for all of my investors. Um, this is looking good, to be honest with you, because I did tell you guys in that picture, everyone is screaming recession, 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 the recession indicators, recession analysts. Everyone's saying a recession is coming. But just remember, whenever any big time, everyone was saying something's going to happen, such as Brexit is not going to happen, it's not going to happen, it happened. Trump's not going to win the elections, Trump's not going to win the elections, he did. And I can name a million other things. The black swan on Swiss franc. Everyone was saying the floor is going to be held. They'd be stupid not to hold it because they're going to cause an economic collapse. And all of these analysts who ironically don't even trade the markets are telling us what's going to happen. But they can't even take $5 out of their pocket, put it in the market and say, hey, I got my money on this. I got my money on this here, right there. I got my money on this too and on this too. So I've got my money on this. and. I'm not an idiot anymore, and I say idiot, we all were idiots thinking that, you know, imagining the market going to our direction. No, I'm reactive. I'll continue to gather data and analysis. I'll invest my time into this frequently, consistently, to look for reasons to either stay or get out. The fact that I have money on this means I don't only have specific interests in protecting that money, not being right. Who cares about being right? I care about making money and protecting my capital, and you should too. So I think we're going to see a bull run in the stock markets. You know, in 1974, I think, there was that craze where the stock market collapse is coming because the time cycle is up. Nobody cares about the time cycle. It's just irony that it happens. Um, so in 1974 or six, somewhere there, so yeah, the, everyone was saying, you know, the next recession is here, it's here, it's here. And guess what? The market went on for like 12 or 15 year bull run, the strongest ever bull run in history. I could put some money on that actually happening again. No jokes. I could actually put some money on this to show you and tell you that we just might 
be going on another bull run, not specifically in the Eurozone, but in the USA. Check this out. So everyone's saying it's coming down. They're drawing all these uh, things. And yeah, I can draw them too. I mean, we could have a little contraction like this. But you know what? If all patterns worked out every time, I would be a billionaire by now. Hell, a trillionaire. Um, so patterns don't work out all the time. Remember that. This, you know, that you see on investing.com and all of these financial so-called institutions, they say this is going to go down. It's going to go down hard. 50% retracement, uh, billion dollars lost, trillions of jobs lost, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but what if, what if it just pops right out and just goes whoop and continues going up and continues this bull run that historically just keeps going straight? There is the 2007 and 8 crisis, and after that, we started a bull run. There's a 2015 corrections. There's a 2012 correction. And then there is a correction too. So what if this was the correction? See that? What if this was the actual correction? Nobody can say in time, but they will. If it pushes up, they'll say, oh, yeah, that was the correction. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we knew the whole time. We knew. And then you ask them, did you make any money on this? And they say, um, no, no, no. You know, I don't trade the markets. I'm... Uh, I'm, um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just an analyst and people pay me to do analysis. I would never pay anyone any money to do something for me that they don't actually do, like for real do. Like, would you go to a car mechanic who doesn't fix cars to fix your car? Or a car, no, a car mechanic who doesn't fix his own car, but he's going to fix your car. Would you do that? I mean, that would just... Silly, why doesn't the guy fix his own car? You go to a cook to cook you food that doesn't cook himself food. I mean, these are basic things. Okay, maybe the guy's bored, doesn't want to cook for himself, wants to eat out. But hell, I'm not going to bet my money on something that somebody else can't even bet their own money. And I'm going to pay him thousands of dollars, even hundreds of thousands a year, so they can do some silly analysis and tell us what's going to happen. I mean, my four, four and a half year old son can spot a contraction in the markets or a double top or a head and shoulders. Just have to sit there five days with him and explain to him what it is. Print out a few pictures and says, look for this baby, find it. And you'll find it. This is how you use a mouse. And you know what, I'm, I'm, it's the same thing. He's gonna tell me there's a double top, there's this, there's that. What's the point of paying for that? Um, anyway, I'm getting out of hand here, but uh, GBP USD almost to take profit now, looking really nice. Euro CHF is, stagnating a little bit um but i think it should be fine um yeah so i've got the trades running i told you we're gonna focus on the on the watch list see euro usd coming right back down here now that's that's when i might start getting a little worried about euro specifically about chf uh, not gbp because gbp should be weaker uh, this contraction does look valid this is on the daily, by the way, on the four hour. I just have to drag it up here. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'll continue to monitor this if there is a breakout. Also, remember, you're never too late to get into a trade. I mean, even this, you know, you could go in five lots from here to here. <laughs> you'll, make a, you'll make a couple of hundred bucks because um, it should be coming right there or to the 50. It should be coming there soon. RSI is slowly coming in, but um, we should see a similar move to this. So I'm really expecting take profit to be reached. Um, let me show you another take profit that was reached this week, USD JPY. That's the sell. Beautiful little trade here. 50% um, was reached and we just pushed right out of it. You see that? We came, we went up, we went down, we made another reversal candle and then boom, we went right back up. So that resistance or support lines up with this level here where price reversed and you can see a touch there and it couldn't break it. This was a decent reversal in price, but then price action came right back right to it. So what could happen is that we see another attempt at this level um, and only stagnate maybe at the black level here because that was a major mover at one point in time. All in all, that's all I've got for you guys. That's it. Um, next up, one, PM US session. 
I'm going to continue monitoring the markets. 27 minutes to new candles. Thank you all for attending. Lots of people in the session. I'm really happy that people are uh, attending this. And I hope that you guys are learning and improving in one way or another. Because then my job is done. Um, okay, now I need to go and do a bunch of other things and um, start recording some videos for the course. Thank you for attending and I'll see you later. Bye now.